Right then, we are back with another challenge video. And if you follow our channel, now we're probably talking five or six years ago, we done a challenge if I could catch a hundred pounds of fish on 10 pounds worth of bait. It was at this very lake reef from just around the corner and it was three hours in the evening. So we thought for this video, can we make it 10 times harder? We've got to try and catch a hundred pound of fish on one pounds worth of bait. That is it. So I've come up with a game plan and we are into the first fish of the session. So let's check the time. What is it? It's half past five. It's going to get dark about nine. So let's say half past eight. We are going to have to have some sort of weigh in or look at the clicker and see if we've done it. But this one's nearly ready. So let's get this in and I'll tell you more about that plan. There we go. Fish number one and a nice start. I'm going to give myself. Right, so what I think I'm going to do, rather than weigh him in at the end, I'm pretty sure that people will trust me by now. I'm going to click them onto a clicker and I think I'm going to give myself, let's go four pound. Four pound for that one. And what we'll do throughout the session, we'll keep a tally and see if we get to that hundred by the time that we get to half past eight. So there's the start. Let's get this into the keep net and we'll talk about the method that I have chosen to use to see if I can catch a hundred pound of carp on one pound's worth of bait. Right, there we go. Let's start. So here we go. I'm going to go clicker, four pound on the clicker. Let's hope we can get that to three figures by the end of the evening. But I guess I should talk to you about what we've chosen to do. So one pound's worth of bait. Now, I could have gone down perhaps the sweet corn route or the bread route, but I didn't. I chose to go with pellets. So what I did, went into local AD and there's a little pick and mix stand. So I got literally a third of a bag of pellets. So I got myself a whole bag and I got a third of it. So that is all of my bait. But I think if the method catches that we are, we can probably catch on about that, which would be about 20 peas worth, but you can't buy 20 peas worth. So we've got a pound's worth of pellets. That is all I've got. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the method. Now, I do have to explain something. If you watched our old video, the £10 did include a day ticket. So I've had to blag the day ticket. But today I've been doing some coaching. I was actually coaching Izzy, who's just behind me. Come on, Izzy. You said you wanted to come in on camera. Izzy wanted to say hello. So we were coaching the other weren't we? And you caught fish. In, tell me how quick you caught it. I said one, five seconds. I caught it in one second. One second. So Izzy's had a good day. Well done, Izzy. Yeah, so Rick has let me fish on here for free so we've blagged a day ticket and we've got one pounds worth of bait so the method i have chosen is actually like just called slapping so what i'm going to be doing so i'm fishing 13 meters i've got an eight mil pellet on and you're just rotating your pole over three times normally but that does change which i can talk to you more about during the session and what i'm trying to do is every probably 10 to 15 seconds i'm repeating that process and that is trying to imitate that I'm actually there with my catapult feeding some bait. Now, a lot of people find this a very demoralizing method and I can see why, because you feel like you need to be doing more, but you need to have confidence that that noise you're making is attracting the fish. And eventually after, I don't know, sometimes you slap it three times and your pole gets dragged around, but sometimes you need to sit there for five or 10 minutes keep rotating it, keep making that noise, and then they come in to investigate, and the only bait that's there is yours. So that's the plan I've gone with. I'm gonna see, the first fish took me about, I'm gonna say five minutes to catch. So hopefully, oh, I missed the bite there. Hopefully we can catch another one fairly soon, and then this method is gonna work. The other way I could do it is if I see some fish, I could just swing a bait in front of them, and they call that one either mugging or dobbing, and you're just putting a bait right in front of a fish you see and hopefully they snatch at it. That's the plan I've gone with. Like I said, there was a couple of options, but this one I think is my best chance of catching that weight in a relatively short time. We are fishing in the evening. It's probably one of the better times to fish. There's, this lake was pretty much full. There's now only a couple of people fishing. So yeah, let's give this five or 10 minutes, keep repeating that process and hopefully another one's gonna grab hold of it and we're gonna have another fish to show you.
There we go, another fish, and it's gone absolutely ballistic. I don't really know what it was doing. It's going one way, then the other, and then the last it was going slack, it's just going nuts. They quite often do go a bit crazy when you hook them shallow because they're obviously bolting away from being hooked with that pellet and they're not really expecting, you know, to be caught like that, I guess, because they're not really eating anything there and they're just almost snatching at. I'm guessing in their eyes, they're obviously snatching at something, but I don't quite know what. But the one good thing about this method is they are normally bigger fish. Certainly at this venue anyway, if you feed pellets or casts or anything like that, like what you would do if you're fishing shallow, you get a lot of F1s, roach and stuff like that. Well, this method does eradicate that and they are normally a lot bigger fish. So let's hope we don't catch anything too small because I don't know how long that one took, a little bit longer than expected, but not ages. But we're going to need to catch them fairly quick if we're going to get to this hundred pounds. So fingers are crossed. And there's another one coming towards the net. There we go, fish number two. And it's actually not particularly that big. It was just one of these little common carp that's absolutely turbocharged. Quite often they um, they do swim around a bit quicker than the big ones, but there we go. I think the other one was probably a touch over four. This one might be a touch under, so I'm going to even it out. If he lets me hold him up, I'm going to even it out and say that is another four pound to be added to the tally. So there we go. That's eight pound. What I'm going to do now is going to get this one into the net. And I think I'm going to really get my head down, fish hard for a little while, try and boost that click away up, and then perhaps have a look at the rig and a bit more about the way they're fishing it. another fish coming towards the net now it's been a good little spell I haven't looked at the time currently what are we at the moment currently we have 43 pounds on the clicker and that's plus this so oh, here we go there we go that didn't take long this one's gonna give me another I'll be conservative and I'll give it another four they probably are a bit bigger than what I'm clicking, but I want to be I want to be honest with it and not, not make it up as if we're catching more than we are. So let me show you this one. I'm going to give myself four pounds. Come on, so I'm down. There we go. That is not one of those. I've had a couple of a lot bigger than this. We've had one that is probably eight or nine pounds. We've had one clicked seven. This one doesn't want to behave at all, does it? Calm down, we want to show you the camera. Right, that's the best I'm going to get with that, I think. But there we go, let's get this one in the net. Right, I've given up with him. I'm going to put that one in the net, and then we're going to show you a little bit about the rig. Right, okay, so let's just take a little break and talk to you about the rig that I'm using and how I've set it up. 
and then I think we might catch one or two more and then we're going to make a tactful change. I think we're going to do the same thing but down the edge because it's late at night now, everybody knows. It gets to this time of day, they all come in the edge, certainly the big fish. So slap this rig in the edge and we should be able to catch down there and they should be big fish. I picked this peg because they're deep margins so we will come on to that but let's have a look at the rig. So let's start with the elastic, this is green slick, you just have to match that to whatever size fish you're in your lake. Like I said, it does tend to pick out bigger fish when you're fishing like this. So gear up for it and make sure that you're ready to catch bigger fish. And in thinking about that, we've gone 018 main line. Same with the hook link, it's really, really strong. Float wise, I've got a matrix dibber in a 0.2 gram. You want a quite a shallow or a dibber style float, unless you're fishing, let's say three, four foot, because you can fish this at any depth, then you might want to put a float for bristle. But I'm only fishing here at 18 inches and at the moment that's perfect for a little dibber float now there's a couple of things that i do do with the rig the shotting is set halfway between the float and the hook so this is when you swing this rig over i'm getting three plops i'm getting the hook bait i'm getting my shot and i'm getting my float so you can, as you're rotating it i tend to do in three slaps you're getting three pots, three pots. It looks like nine pellets going in. If you put everything in one go, you're only getting float and that you're just decreasing the amount of noise you're making. So that's why I have three separations, three noises, create a bit more attraction. On the hook link, I've just got a short six inch bait bandy because I'm bait banding an eight mil pellet. And the one other addition I have got to the rig is because you are swinging your rig around, you need a little bit bigger line between elastic and float so you want to make sure that's a bit longer but to keep in contact with it i use two back shot if not this is going to be all like loose as you're swinging it so this just keeps it tight and makes you haven't got to strike all of this line up to actually connect with the fish so that's the rig i mean it's does a rig get more simple probably not it's like a little dibber float a vulcan shot him and a bait banded eight mil pellet it doesn't get much more simple than that and then we'll ship out there i'm going to try and catch one more out here and then we're going to go and slap this down the edge but i want to talk to you a little bit about how we're doing it so we're fishing 30 meters at the moment and we're just slapping over three times i do mix that up and sometimes i'll do one sometimes i'll do two but i don't know why three is one of my lucky numbers and i just think that it makes enough noise but then you're not spending so much time windmilling it around and like I said, you're trying to create the, you know, you're trying to create almost that they think a feeding spell is going on, but it's not. You're just creating the noise with your rig. The one that I really realized this method is good is we fished a qualifier at Barston. And if you never fished Barston it's for, it's massive. And when you're fishing at 16 meters, you feel like you're fishing like a top kit. It's that big. It's, it's like... I don't know what it is, 150 yards to the middle in places, maybe even wider. It's really big, 124 pegs. And you're not feeding anything, you're swinging this eight mil pellet in and you're catching big carp, like eight, 10 pound fish, and you've not fed anything all day. And like, if it works in a lake that big, then you come to a lake here with loads of fish, a little bit smaller, just creating that noise, you're definitely gonna catch fish. Some people don't like it. Chris, you hate it, don't you? Yes, <laughs> if anyone knows Chris is fishing, he is all out ultimate attack. He would fish um <laughs> if he was fishing a ground bait feeder, he'd put like eight big balls of ground bait in then for like he doesn't do anything by halves. The more bait, the more fish in Chris's eyes. But we can't do that because we only had a pound's worth of pellets. So we're gonna continue to flick this rig in. I'm gonna catch one more fish and then I'm gonna just do exactly the same, but I'm gonna go down the edge of it because I'm pretty convinced sitting here now. There's a lot of movement all around the banks where people have chucked bait in and I think we'll catch them that way. Oh. That one decided to hook itself. It's always nice. I wasn't really, if I'm honest with you, paying full attention. Whoa, he's gone absolutely mental. And I was just having a look to see if there was a fish that I could swing the pellet out and the pole went round in my hands but like so they do really snatch at it because it must be you can imagine being a fish like it must be infuriating you hear all these what you think is pellets going in trying to look for them and the only one there is the one that i'm swinging in so when they do snatch at it they are pretty aggressive with it and it does normally result in a fish hooked fairly in the mouth you don't really foul hook 
many fish on this because you haven't got the, the competition, let's say, of the fish swimming in and out of loose feed and pellets. That's when they come really shallow and you, you get the odd foul hooker, a few missed bites. Like, you don't really miss that many bites with this method because it's just not, it's not enough there to, to really put them in that feed and frenzy. But this one's a better one. These are the sort of fish we need. This is going to put us over, well, what's the time? Time is seven o'clock. So, is that, it's about halfway, isn't it? And then, and about halfway in the weight as well. So we're on track at the moment to do it. We're on track to have a hundred pounds in three hours, if this fish comes in. So let me concentrate on that. And then we'll show you this one because it's a bit bigger. Right, let's have, Look at this one. That's a lot better. What am I going to give myself for this? If he stops going mental, they all go absolutely crazy. But I'll show you it. And then... Calm down. Right, there we go. I'm going to give myself £7 for that one. Nice common. Put up a bit of a fight, but that has put me over the £50 mark at pretty much the halfway point. So all is looking good, and I honestly think that if we now repeat this down the edge, it's only going to get better. So that one's going to go in the net, and we're going to repeat the process, but have a little go down the edge. Right, let's have a little go down the edge, and I probably should explain that this is a bit of a unique situation on where I've sat. I've purposely sat with deep margins, so this rule probably applies to anywhere really if you're going to slap a rig over this sort of style of fishing i probably wouldn't do it if i didn't have four foot of water let's say and that includes fishing like in the middle of a lake or down the edge because you need a bit of depth if not you'd find the fish will just go straight down to the bottom but what i'm going to do is literally repeat the same process but i'm just going to fish it down the edge like i said we're at that we're at that time of day now if you were fishing a different peg to this, a lot of different pegs on here are only two foot of water down the edge. You'd be putting a lot of bait in, the big fish would be there, and you'd expect to catch, you know, pretty quick. So hopefully this this little late charge and the second half of the weight that I need is gonna be a little bit quicker. I think we're probably just over the 50 pound mark now. And as I'm slapping this down here, I'm seeing a few bits of water disturbance, the odd swirl, bits and pieces like that. Wait, there we go. And there's a fish. It's crazy, but if you slap it where they are, it is an incredibly, incredibly good method. So here we go. The charge is on now. I'm going to get this one in, get my head down, see if we can catch a few fish because like I said, they should be even bigger here as well. So let's do that. Let's catch a few fish. Uh, see if we can really get close to this hundred pound. No, we didn't go in the net. <laughs> <laughs> that, I what? did have that one. <laughs> Five pound gone. <laughs> Five pound, it doesn't count. <laughs> oh, just get a nice little uh, shot of him nice lying across my arm. Me holding oh, him yeah. up. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> I'm going to call this one the last fish because on my clicker I've got I've been safe I've got 105 already I managed to drop one over the net when Chris was filming and I've got one on the end 
to finish with. So I'm comfortably happy to say that we've done it. I probably should explain while I'm getting this one in there. It might sound a lot to some people, like 100 pound in three hours. Well, technically it's only 10 past eight. So not even three hours, two and a half just over. Um, but when you break it down, you think like probably the average size has been over five pound. But even if you said the average was five pound, you make, you know, that's 20 fish. If you're catching one every 10 minutes, is that? One every just, just a little bit quicker. So that's not that quick. And you've got to bear in mind that in my keep net, I've probably got two fish that are, that are probably 10 pounds. I've got quite a few that are eight. So you know, probably hear it reef them. I probably only need maybe 14, 15 fish to comfortably say like I could have had a hundred pounds. So we've definitely got over that, but you can see why you don't need to panic and think that you know, you need to be catching one absolutely every two or three minutes because it's simply not the case. And we've got a cool one to end on. It's not as big as the others. Is it going to behave? But it's a mega looking common. <laughs> it's not going to, it's got like a white belly and then dark on the top. That is a wicked way to end it. Come on, calm down. So what I think I'll do is I'll give up with him. Right, I'm gonna get <laughs> I'm gonna get that in the keep net and just to prove it to you that we have caught them, I'm gonna get these tipped out. Like the clickers click back all the way to double zeros because obviously it only goes to 99. I am more than confident that we've done it. And look, I've hardly used anything. I mean we said let's do it on a pan. I've probably done it on 20 pellets. <laughs> I've literally not fed a pellet. It is a very very good method when it works when there's a lot of fish and you've got a bit of water so if you've never done it before give it a go let us know how you get on as well but let's tip these ones back show you the end result and as always a huge thanks for watching don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you very shortly with the next video